Let, let me welcome you this evening to the Bethel United Church of Jesus Christ Apostolic, a Friday night Bible class. It's so good to have you on this uh, late Zoom teaching tonight. Um, and we are going to, at this time, ask the Lord presence to be with us and take us through this teaching in Jesus' name. Amen. So why do you join me in prayer, short prayer tonight, in the name of Jesus. Let us begin. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you again another time or another Friday evening. Lord, you have kept us over the past few days. Lord, and here we are again, highly humbling ourselves and bowing down before you, Lord, and surrendering all to thee, knowing that heaven is thy throne and earth is thy footstool. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege tonight that we can come to hear from you. Lord, we know that our faith needs to be strengthened, but not to uh, increase, but to be strengthened in the name of Jesus. So we pray, Heavenly Father, that your words, oh Lord, will come to our ears tonight. Oh God Almighty, and our words will take root in our spirit. And we can, oh God Almighty, live the kind of life you want us to live. Uh, because your words are true and your promises are sure. So tonight, Lord, we give thanks unto thee. In the name of Jesus, bless your children everywhere, where they are in this fashion, in this pandemic. Lord, you have provided this Zoom teaching where we can continually, oh God Almighty, release the word of God, Lord, and, give, and let it give course to everyone. Hallelujah. The word of God is not locked away. Lord Jesus, always find a way that your words can go for it, that souls will be born to the kingdom, souls will be saved. Bless now, right? Bless us, right? Take over, take full control. As we say, thank you. Many unmentioned mercies. But we do pray to grant it unto us. Let self die out and the flesh be quiet, and your will be done. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And praise the Lord again. Let me welcome you another time amen to the bible class tonight number two tips road and here we are amen with the book of acts we are in the book of acts uh, a few weeks now the book of action luke the writer of the book of acts he also wrote the gospel of luke and then you know he gave an account of the early church because luke was not saved at the beginning Luke was not saved until Acts chapter 16. The Lord used him and he's the only Gentile writer of the Bible. And Luke was also a physician. The Lord used him to put together, amen, the early church. What we have with us is the, 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 the apostolic church, the beginning and the day of Pentecost. So Luke gave an account of what had happened. We tonight continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Amen. That's where we are. And that's where the church started on the day of Pentecost. We can give an account of the history of the church of Jesus Christ, where it began and where we are coming from. And we can also let you know where we are going. So uh, Luke here tonight is very important in this writing of the book of Action. And the book of Acts is divided really into the ministry of two of the apostles. And the one is Peter and Paul. Uh, Peter from chapter 1 to chapter 12 is the Holy Ghost in the ministry of Peter, uh, apostle. He was the man that Jesus gave the keys to, to open the church on the day of Pentecost and uh, in Caesarea uh, with Cornelius House. And then we have uh, John. Not John uh, Paul, who saved for 16 years after Peter. Here we have uh, Paul in his ministry, takes from Acts chapter 13 to the end. One of the things we have to understand that there's no benediction in the book of Acts because it continues Pentecost over 2,000 years or 2,021 years ago since this church was manifested at Pentecost. Here we are, we tonight are part of the body of Christ. We continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. 
tonight we are dealing with Paul, the conversion of Paul. Uh, but the church had begun in Jerusalem and in the Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came, 3,000 souls were baptized and the next day, 5,000. And the church grew into great numbers and um, the Lord blessed the church. Uh, but one of the things that happened was the Lord, before he went away, gave instruction that they should begin the preaching and teaching in Jerusalem, then Samaria, Judea, and to the rest of the world. Uh, the apostles at that time did not truly obey that. But Jesus said they tried to privatize the gospel in Jerusalem. They kept it there. And after a while, amen, there was a, a great persecution of the church which scattered them abroad. And then the gospel begins to be spread it all over the world because it's an international gospel that can be privatized, it's not national, and keep it to itself, which is the gospel that, that, that comes to save the world. But God so loved the world that he gave himself uh, to us as a, a, our kinman redeemer and redeem us from sin and shame and degradation. Here we have tonight, I mean, we are with the book, Acts, uh, Luke, the writer, like I said before, and we are in chapter nine, and we're going to look at this man, uh, Paul, uh, Saul, we should say. Let's deal with Saul first, and because he had uh, two names, he was Saul and then Paul. Um, and so Paul, he had a, a dual nationality. He was a Hebrew and he was a Roman citizen. We need to look at all of that. But this time, the church in Jerusalem had grown and it's grown so, and getting every day, you, you know, it was so added to the church. And the, the numbers of the church had multiplied. And what has happened that the, the religious people, the Jews, with their religion that they had, um, Judaism, uh, were decreasing. And the apostolic church were getting more and more popular. Here we had a problem here. The opposition now was from the authorities. But we have our text tonight. Um, from chapter 7, we noticed that chapter 6, we talk about the, the deacons, and then deacon Stephen was stoned. And when deacon Stephen was stoned in Acts chapter 7, after his defense, uh, he defended himself with the gospel. No, he took them on a journey, on a history journey, and went from Abraham on to their present time and to let them know that this is Jesus, he is the Messiah. And then they were cut to their hearts when Stephen spoke. Uh, the word convicted them and they were cut to their hearts and they bashed him with their teeth and they took hold of him and stoned him to death. And that was in chapter seven. Verse 58, I'm going to just read chapter 7, verse 58. It said here, um, and I read chapter 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. They were hungry. It was a mob and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid their clothes on a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. So for the first time, we see here Saul's name yeah, comes into uh, out of obscurity because he was there. But now the Bible brings him up. And his name was Saul. So while they were stoning Stephen, he held their garments for them to give them uh, more freedom to throw the stones at Stephen. And they laid their clothes at the feet of this young man, and his name was Saul. And you notice the, the Bible brings him to us um, in, as a, as a uh, he was uh, participating in a murder. And that's where we are, he was accomplished to murder. And that's who Paul was. Now, it, it, it seems uh, that what he was doing, um, he was doing it of his own thinking, but yes, that is true. But he believed that what he was doing 
he was doing right. Amen. Because at this time, he had a, what happened to him, he had a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. So these things he was doing, thinking within himself, he was doing right. But the Bible said that they laid their clothes down at his feet while they stoned Stephen. And we know that Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So Stephen was stoned and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, this is Stephen, and saying, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said so, he fell asleep. So Stephen was stoned and Saul was one of the men. This, this name popped up as an accomplice to murder and he was there. And so uh, Stephen fell asleep. Now, when the Bible said it, as we move to the next uh, chapter eight, it said something more about Saul. He said that Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered upon abroad throughout the regions of Judea, Samaria, except the apostles. The apostles were still in Jerusalem. And the boat men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. And for Saul, Bible says Saul, he made havoc of the church entering into every house and failing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. So here we have Paul, amen, this man. Uh, when you understand this man's credential and he tells you in the scripture who he was, Paul was born in a place called Tarsus, Turkey. And his father was a Hebrew man, and his mother had Roman connections. Paul was born in Tarsus, and Paul was sent to Jerusalem to be schooled under a rabbi, a top man named Gamaliel. So he was one of these top teachers in, in the rabbinical schools, and that's where Paul was sent to be trained up to study the law. So Paul studied the law, and he was sent there for seven years. And he studied the law. And then Paul, after that, he was sent to the high priest to study the intricacy of the blood. And Paul was with the high priest for four years. So that's 11 years of training under the law, the, the, the Levitical system, the rabbinic, rabbinical school. And there he was being trained up under the law, and when it comes down to the blood, he knew what that was all about. So on the death atonement, Leviticus 16, if you understand that Paul will give you uh, a good teaching on that particular day, he understood that from the high priest. So here we have Paul. Now the church was, was growing in Jerusalem, and Jews were being influenced into the church. They were being drawn in by the Holy Ghost, and Paul, they didn't like it. Because what they, the church was teaching about one king, King Jesus, repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, and they began to grow. And what happened was Paul then uh, began to persecute the church. Didn't like what the brethren were saying. Now, if you understand Paul's credential, Paul said that he was an Hebrew of the Hebrew. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. And he said that what? He was from the stock of Israel, circumcised on the eighth day. And from the tribe of Benjamin. So he's what you call a, a full-blooded Jew all the way through. Judaism was in him nonstop. Now, Paul said, when it comes down to the law, he said, touching the law, he was blameless. Uh, but you see, in other words, what he was saying, and if the law could get a man to help, Paul would have gone leave all of us. But when he comes down to the law, he said he was blameless. 
Uh, but he says, when he pleased Almighty God to separate him from his mother's womb, he conferred no, no, no longer with tradition, which is the law. So here we have Paul with his credentials, this man. Oh, he, he studied and he was now an attorney. And he used to advise the, the Sanhedrin Council I mean, and the authorities what to do. So he was their religious, he was the hope of Judaism. And now anywhere the Christians talk about Jesus, Paul would go and Paul would seek them out, arrest them, bring them back to Jerusalem and do what he wanted to do, put them in prison and even kill them. He had that much authority and power. And this is what he was doing. So the Bible said that Paul run havoc with the church and they were under pressure. And they the brethren, and it was more after the Jewish brethren to get rid of them because they're talking about another king. And he thought because over the, the, the years of the history, Israel slipped into so much, so much idolatry worshiping strange God, false gods and everything. So when the name Jesus came, and when this, the church started to manifest, he thought it was something different from what God wanted. So he began to persecute the church. And any Jewish man that gets into the church, Paul would go for, towards him and the Gentiles that is in the church, he would begin to, to go for them. And he would arrest them, bring them back to Jerusalem, and handcuffs and chains, and he could kill them if he wanted. That's the power he had. And that continued because the persecution from, from, from Paul they allowed them to be scattered and go into Judea and Samaria and other parts of the world to preach the gospel as what Jesus Christ had told them before he went. And before he went even to Calvary, he told them that the gospel must be preached. Go ye therefore. Jesus told them after his resurrection, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins, they shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Here we have Paul going to Damascus. So if we go to chapter 9 of his conversion, we will find out here at his conversion. And the Bible said, and you know the verse that we really need to look at is verse 15 of chapter 9. Verse 15, which said, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to, be, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So Paul was commissioned. So let us take a look tonight at his conversion. This man who was hungry with people who call on the name of Jesus. Eh? He thought it was a, a new thing that comes up. And he's, he's going to try to put it out, out the fire. But you know, the gates of hell can't prevail against this church. Uh, Jesus said upon this rock, you know this, it was not upon Judaism, but on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So although Paul uh, tried his best here uh, to hold, put out the fire, what the brethren did, they began to leave Jerusalem and go to other parts. Uh, of, of, of the Middle East. So they came to Syria. In Damascus is the capital of Syria. Syria is on the northern side of, 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 of Israel, right on the top. And Damascus is the capital of Syria. So the, the brethren then were heading towards Syria um, and, and Damascus. So Paul heard that they are, are moving away from Jerusalem because of the persecution. He began to follow them. And he realized that they were now in Damascus. Paul went to the high priest. So the Bible said, and it's in verse 9, and Paul, yet, let's read for chapter 9. He says, and Paul, yet, bidding out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples. And the Lord went into the high priest. Paul went to see the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues. And if he found any of this way, whether there be men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So you notice he always head toward the synagogues because the Jews would be in the synagogues. And if he find any in the synagogues uh, speaking about Jesus, uh, then he would arrest them. 
And then he went further to say here, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. He said, if he found any in this way, they call this way the apostolic movement this way, then whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. So here we have Paul and got all he needed of his party, amen, of a posse with men and chains and handcuffs and buttons and all kind of things going to hunt the saints, going saint hunting. Eh? What is it? Going after God's children. And he was heading to, to Damascus, to the Bible said. Uh, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. So the Lord allowed him to journey. The Lord never knocked him down before as he lately left. The Lord awaited until he covered most of the journey to Damascus. And he was close by. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly, you see that word suddenly? It's a very powerful word. When God makes his appearance to do judgment or, or blessing, so suddenly, you know this on the day of Pentecost, while they were in the upper room. Yeah? And the Bible said they were praying. And suddenly, they heard a sound from him. Jesus was on, on present. You see, when Jesus turned up, things, things are done suddenly. Suddenly. He said, yeah, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Now he saw this light, and he knew that this light came from heaven. And one thing he knew, it wasn't the sun. Light wasn't the moon, no star. So he said, there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Now, he saw a light from heaven. In one scripture in, um, in Acts 22, testimony was, he said he saw a light above the brightness of the sun. Oh, it was daylight, and this light was above the brightness of the sun. So this was not an ordinary light that he saw. And let us read some more. And the voice said unto him, calling him by his name, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Beloved ones, you know this what the question that was asked him by God? Why he didn't God didn't say why persecuted thou, thou the brethren? He said, Why persecuted thou me? You know what that is telling us? That we have no right to be making any kind of a persecution or a problem for any one of the brethren. We shouldn't do that. Because when we do things against the brethren, persecute them, or is God will go up against. You hear what he said to Saul? He didn't say, why persecute them now the brethren? God said, why persecute them now me? So I have to be careful what I do and say to you. I have to have uh, kindness shown to you. I have to have sympathy, mercy. Eh? I got to be humble towards you. So he said here, and he fell to the earth. He fell to the earth when he saw the light eh? from heaven. He fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? God said that it was him that was being persecuted. And he said, Saul answered and said, Who art thou, Lord? And the voice was penetrating. It's a voice that he never heard one voice like that before. Now, he answered and said, Who art thou, Lord? Who art thou, Lord? And what will thou? He said, what, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It's hard for thee to kick against the bricks. Now here we have um, Paul, when the Lord said, Call him by his name. And why thou persecuted thou me? He said, who art thou, Lord? You notice that he answered him, Lord. That Lord, he answered him, knowing that the voice was some voice of authority. But he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, 
whom thou persecutest. It's hard for thee to kick against the prick. Now, the problem with this, when he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest, all something about that Paul understood right away. Now, Jesus, the name Jesus was pretty known in Israel. Time, a lot of people were called Jesus. But what happened to Paul here, what, why he was uh, so um, surprised for what happening, he said, I am Jesus. Now, from the moment that the voice said, I am, Paul knew who it was at that time because he's a man who studied the Bible, right? he studied the law, the Torah. Now, when Moses was about to go to the turn of Israel, to deliver them. Moses said to God, whom shall I say? He said, but they need a name. They need to know who. So the Lord said, go to them and tell them, I am that I am. Now you notice the Lord used the word I am, but there was an abbreviation there. They didn't put the name to the I am because the name was not revealed yet uh, to, to anyone who the I am is. So there was an abbreviation there. All they had was the I am. So Moses went down to Egypt and told them that is the I am, that I am sent them to deliver them. All right? So when now here he meets Paul on the Damascus road, and when Paul says, who are thou, Lord? He says, I am Jesus. He put the Jesus to the I am. He says, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It's hard for thee to kick against the bricks. Now, what Paul was doing, just like any other religious people today, you know, and this is where we have to pray, pray for the world, pray for the, the religious people. You know, the religious people of this world today, they are of a zeal for God without knowledge. They don't know who he is, but yet there is a desire in them uh, have a zeal to know, but they have they have a zeal to know, but they have no knowledge of who is. What they're lacking is knowledge of who the creator is. And you say they, they are so sincerely wrong. You, you look at religious people today, and everything looks the same. They have, they have buildings and they have choirs, they have uh, pulpits, they have music, they have, they have but when they hear they don't have the doctrine right. So they, they have um, a zeal towards God, but without knowledge. You see, so they, what they want is to have the knowledge of who the Creator is. Any man lack knowledge of God. Amen. God will give knowledge liberally uh, to any man that knows who has knowledge. But to know who God is, you need to have the knowledge of who God is. Here we have Paul who did not know who Jesus was. Hey, Paul, yet he had a zeal for God, but everything was without knowledge. So all his training, his teaching, amen, the time he spent with Gamaliel, the time that he spent with the high priest, and, and, and that he was, he was an attorney to the Sanhedrin Council, you know, man, he was a top man, Pope of Judaism. He was sincere in what he was doing, but he was sincerely wrong. Uh, today is what we have to pray for is people that is religious, who think that they can do anything looking for easy religion. Now this salvation that we have is uh, the greatest thing on this planet is this salvation. The discipline that it go with it is holiness. You see an holiness without which no man shall see God. So to get into this salvation, to get into this church, hey, you have to come the Bible way. I was listening to somebody on the, on the, 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 the um, tube was saying, and they look, they look like they were, and they're sounding like they were, but when they opened their mouth and they were singing this song, and the song that they were singing, they said, God in three persons. I close the book saying that. God is not in three persons. God is one person. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. No, that is entirely an error. That is out of this gospel. 
It's not in the Bible. There's only one God in the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. There's only one God with the Bible testifier. And his name is Jesus. But today, a lot of people eh, have a zeal for God, but they don't knowledge. And comprehend because unless you have a knowledge of who God is, and let me just encourage believers today, get knowledge of the scripture. If you have a knowledge of the scripture, and the Bible is the word of God. Amen. And the word of God to overcome the enemy, you have to know what the word of God is saying. You either listen to it or hear it or read it, or you need to spend time with the word of God because you will overcome with the word of God. Jesus Christ in the wilderness, he dispatches this, the, the, the devil when he came. From the book of Deuteronomy, Jesus never get in a no spirit and started going on. No, all Jesus did was quote from the Deuteronomy. And shall not live by the Lord, but by the word that proceeds out of the mouth. The devil disappeared from him. Hmm? He said, all these kingdoms will I give unto you. Jesus said, he may unto me, he said, get me a Satan. You see, so Jesus uses the word of God. When I need to use the word of God to get rid of the, the enemy today. If not, can have false teachers, false prophets, and false doctrine all around us, and we don't know. If you have an idea, if you have, have a, any knowledge of the word of God, then you'll be able to defend this gospel. Stephen did. And you notice that they stoned him. Don't, don't be surprised if they come at us whilst you are speaking the truth. But the truth of, of, of the gospel must be the truth. And so they, we have Saul, amen, heading down to Damascus. When he had going to Damascus with this party of men, there's a light, he saw a light from heaven of the brightness of the sun. When he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And the word said, uh, the voice said, um, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Um, and the, it's, it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. He said, what, O Lord? He says, I am Jesus. I am Jesus. So you notice that the name only came in the New Testament, not in the Old Testament. The I am, as you know, even the Gospel of John, the seven I am said, I am the good shepherd, I am the door, I am all the I ams. In, 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 in John Gospel, it's, it's in the, by, written by John. But here we have, here, uh, he said, to, why, why persecuted thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Jesus told him. And he trembled and astonished, said, Lord, this is all now, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Is that good? And as somebody think that's what some of us need to be asking the Lord Jesus, what will thou have me to do? Yes, we need to know what the Lord wants us to do and not to want us to do what he wants to do. As God is in charge of us. We are in the body of Christ and he tells us what we need to be doing. So he said, while Saul was trembling, him and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Which is a very good question, because if we do not know what to do, we need to ask the Lord what we need to be doing. And the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the city. So he need to continue his journey. And it shall be told thee what thou must do. He said, when you get to Damascus, he was close by, nearing into Damascus, when the Lord uh, shone uh, that light from heaven, and he fell to the ground in the dust. And he got up, and the men which were journeyed with him, they stood peaceful because all the men that was with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. You notice they, they, they hear the voice. Uh, they didn't say anything about the light, but they saw the light, but they heard the voice, and they said they, they saw no man. They saw no man. And Saul arose from the earth because he was in the dust. Amen. He fell off his mule that he was riding and he was into the dust. It's time for him to go. He get down on his face 
And when his eyes were open, when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. So what happened? Blindness. So the Lord blinded him because the light that he saw above the brightness of the sun, that light to get him to where God wanted him. That light was like the light in the very beginning. When God said, let there be light. That was not sunlight. Or because sunlight didn't come until the fourth day. And the fourth day he made the sun, the moon, and the stars. But when he said, let there be light in the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. That light, I believe, was the light that shone on the Damascus road. And when the light got to Saul, it blinded him, fell to the ground, into the dust, blinded. And when the Lord want, you know, is him to do work for him, the Lord at the first blind him, then he opened his eyes that he can see. Can you see? Natural eyes that is open without Jesus Christ, you are blind. There are so many blind people in the world today. What physical, not physical blindness, but spiritual blindness. So what we need to have is spiritual sight, Holy Ghost sight, see, that we can see. You know, the world today wants to be to believe, but the Bible doesn't teach us that. The Bible teaches us that we need to believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So we need to believe, then we will be able to see. But the world who doesn't want God said they want to see first before they believe. God said, no, not so. We need to believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Eh? We don't walk by sight. I said we walk by faith. And faith will bring us to sight. So we walk, not by physical sight. But he trembling and answering and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. So he had to continue his journey and to go into the city of Damascus. That's where he was heading for. And the Lord didn't turn him back to Jerusalem. He allowed him to go to Damascus. And when he get to Damascus, he will know what to do. The Lord will send, I'll get him a message, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless because the men stood speechless. Hearing a voice, they see no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him unto Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. So he went and he was on fasting for three days. And three nights without sight, he couldn't see. Amen. The light had to blind him first before he could see. Enjoy neither did he eat nor drink for three days. But God was about to reveal to him what his purpose was, what he wanted him to do. But he did ask the Lord, What will thou have me to do at this time? Good question for believers to ask the Lord. Amen. If you find out, and the Lord will let you know. Part of the ministry you should be addressing or what you need to be doing. God will let us know and lead you into that. Just ask you, what will thou have me to do at this time? I never feel comfortable to sit in the house of the Lord doing nothing. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple. Now in Damascus, because we have the brethren. The disciples that were in Jerusalem left Jerusalem and had to be hiding from the same man Saul because he was a persecutor. Eh? No, he was about to become a defender of the faith. So let's see what happened. A certain disciple at Damascus, name was Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, the Lord came to Ananias in a vision and said, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called straight. Go into straight street and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. 
For behold, he prayeth. Now here we have this persecutor of the Christian. Uh, the Lord appeared to him and now he was praying. Uh, he was in the house of Judas. One Saul, Tarsus for the old Saul prayeth. He continued to pray. He was on fasting, nothing for three days, and he was blind road vision. Now the Lord said to Ananias, and in, in the vision, he had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in. So Paul, or Saul, would see a man coming in a vision named Ananias. So the Lord prepared him before Ananias got to him, and that he would see this, that when Ananias come, he would know that it was God who sent this man. And as seen in a vision, a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him, that he might receive his sight. And then Ananias answered the Lord, Lord, I have heard many of this man, how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. Here we have uh, Ananias turning to God and reminding God that this man you're sending me to, have you heard about it? And he said, what he said? Then Ananias answered and said, Lord, I have heard of many of this man, how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. So he tried to tell God something, but God don't know. He says, and there he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. So here was Ananias trying to tell God what was the situation. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So there was a call. The Lord had given Saul a direct call. I'm going to send him to the Gentile world. This is it. He said, go thy way, for he's a chosen vessel. So God had chosen him. See, because if you read in the feast and it says, he has chosen us and in him went before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And having predestinated us to the adoption of son, according to his own goodwill and pleasure, that we should be accepted in the beloved. We are chosen, not just Saul, but we too are chosen by God. And you know, we were not the, the first chosen people. Because the first chosen people for God was the Hebrew people. Even the Jews were God's chosen people. They adore, they came from Abraham, and there was children from Abraham was of the flesh. But then you have the ch children that was of the seed. And we know that Isaac, in Isaac shall the seed be called. So Isaac then have Jacob and Esau. So you know that this, the chosen people come through the seed. And Jesus Christ was that seed, end up with him as God's chosen people. So God's chosen people was not everybody. It was the Jews and not every Jew, not every Israelite was Israelite. But the chosen ones were the seed uh, that came out from Abraham. Then you have Isaac. Then you have uh, Jacob was chosen over Esau. Jacob had 12 sons. And that was the nation of Israel. I know Israel is the name of, of the place, of the land of Israel, so the name of the man. And it was Israel, uh, the name was called after Jacob had 12 sons, and there were the 12 tribes of Israel. The land on there now named Israel. I gave that land to Jacob and his descendants. But here, here we have uh, Saul, even, was down now, down in Damascus. And he was blinded for three days and three nights. And then Ananias went to him, touched his eyes, and his scales dropped off from his eyes. And now he could see. And Ananias answered the Lord, that Lord, but you know about this man because of the things that he used to do to the saints in Jerusalem. There we got the authority of the chief priests to bind all who call on thy name. But the Lord said, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. Amen. And the Lord wanted him, amen, to become a minister to the Gentile world. And so he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. That the ministry was more to the 
Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Now, so he had to bring it to the children because the children of Israel in the Gentile countries and regions, there were Jewish people amongst them. Uh, but they too did not like Paul's ministry. As when Paul went to them and went to the synagogues, and when Paul began to teach and preach in the synagogues, that he was a rabbi, and begin to preach and teach in the synagogues, what they did was they listened. And they come to that point where he says, and the Lord sent him as a minister to the Gentile who are broke up. The Jewish people would not accept him if he said, they would listen to him preaching and teaching until he came to that point where he said, and the Lord sent him as a minister Gentile world. Then war broke out. It happens in Thessalonica, it happens in Corinth, it happens everywhere Paul went. He said, as soon as he comes to that word, that God sent him as a minister to the Gentile, trouble. So here we have, here Paul and Ananias now uh, entered into the house, putting his hands on him, and said to him, Brother Saul, and the Lord, even Jesus, had appeared unto thee in the way which thou camest, and sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Here was Paul being knocked down, blinded, not yet baptized, not yet received the Holy Ghost. But the Lord had knocked him down, humbled him first, and then Ananias came to him. And Ananias said in verse 18, and immediately there fell from his eyes as if it had been scaled. So things fell from Saul's eyes as if, as if it had been scales and it dropped from his eyes as it had been scales and he received sight for it. Immediately as the man of God touches him, the scales dropped from his eyes and he could see immediately. And he arose and was baptized. Now he was about to start his ministry. But you know this, he had to get the Holy Ghost and he had to be baptized in Jesus' name. Can't start the ministry without your without the Holy Ghost. Can't start the ministry without your baptized in Jesus' name. Have to have those two credentials from God to give us authority to preach the gospel and to uh, receive the Holy Ghost, that we can preach the gospel and teach the nation and bring them to Christ. Criteria in serving God, we can't do it unless we are filled with the Holy Ghost. What is we have a do light from heaven shun down and on him still was not ready. His eyes were still blind. Until the man of God came and an eyes had touched him and the Lord allowed his eyes to be open. Now he had to be baptized. I mean, he just didn't get the first start. This attorney who was a, a abuser of the church, run havoc with the church, was now going to be baptized. Isn't that something? When, when somebody now surrenders, when he heard the voice, he said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecute. And now, as an immediately there fell from his eyes, as it had been scales, and he received sight for it. And arose and were baptized. And I know Ananias baptized him in Jesus' name. The name that he could not stand to hear anybody call that name. Now he was putting on the name of Jesus Christ. Now we have it. Amen. The persecutor. Eh? Amen. I run out of the church. Now we're going to become the defender of this gospel. Isn't that something? So we are called and chosen to defend this gospel. That's why I like Stephen. Stephen run through the whole Bible with all and they couldn't take it. This is when the word of God, and Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost in chapter 7. Eh? But is the, uh, in, when he began to defend himself with the word of God, they couldn't take it. They decided to kill him. And if you're going to stand up for God, who knows? Which way it might go, we don't know. Just hope that the Lord protect all of us because we are doing it, the work of the Lord, and the Lord will protect. So here we have, uh, he was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Hmm? Let me just read uh, verse 
17. Jesus had appeared unto thee in the way at Mount Camus, sent and send thee that thou mightest receive sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. So he filled with the Holy Ghost and he was baptized in Jesus' name. And when he had received meat and he was threatened, then was saw certain days with the disciples that were at Damascus. So Saul was now threatened. He, he ate, broke fast, baptized, received the Holy Ghost. And this man who had a great knowledge of the Old Testament, he did have that. By touching the 613 laws, he said he was blameless. And he said, um, but he was a two, a Hebrew of the Hebrew, a Pharisee of the Pharisee. And the Bible said, and straightway, straight away, after he was baptized, eh, he preached Christ. You know, it's this, this man eh, who was going down to Damascus had to continue down to my Damascus. And he preached Christ in the synagogue. You see where we head from? The synagogue. Because in the synagogue, he'll find the Jews. And there were certain proselytes, not in the certain areas, but they'll be on the outer court. But he went to the synagogue. And anywhere he, the temples were, uh, he would have found the temples because his people, as you know, Paul desired that all his years should be saved. Uh, but now he was sent as a minister. To the Gentile world, he would never expect that was going to happen. To the pagans, to the people who were not a people, eh? the heathens and Osirots, eh? the Lord sent him one man to the entire Gentile world. Isn't that something? So Paul was also in, 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 in with uh, the fivefold ministry gift was in him and the nine power gifts. So Paul began to preach from Damascus. He never looked back. As a matter of fact, Paul had not been home to his house from the day that happens to him. You know, and it's been questioned many a times that Paul was married. I never went back home. But Paul was a rabbi. And you know, the, 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 the Jewish uh, rabbi, Jewish teachers and, and rabbis, they had to be married. They were rabbis. So he was a rabbi. But he never been back home. And the reason I believe that if he had gone back home, those that searched him to kill him would have gone to his house. He would have jeopardized his family. So he had never been back home. This is when God says he's going to show him how he needs to suffer by his name. And straight away he preached Christ in the synagogues. And in that he is the son of God. He realized who, that Jesus is the Messiah. The son of God. He recognized that. And he began to preach Christ. Christ means the anointed one. You know that the anointed one, that Messiah, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Hebrew, was the Messiah. It was him who came. And no longer no mere son. He knew that he was the son of God. But all that heard him were amazed. So the, the public now, those that knew, saw the reputation of binding Believers, saints, and bringing them back to Jerusalem to be tried, beaten, put in prison. They all knew of his reputation. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them? It's called on the name in Jerusalem. So they recognized now that Paul, who was calling on, uh, who was, who was persecu persecuting them in Jerusalem and destroying them, call on the name of Jesus. Uh, and they said that he came to Damascus by the same intent, eh, that he might bring them bound to the chief priests. So they were afraid of him because they thought that what he's saying that he's now saved might not be true. Maybe he came with the same intent eh, to do what his original journey was for. But no, the Lord had changed his journey eh, and turned him into a believer. What the mighty God we serve. Eh? Unto the chief. So, but Saul increased, the Bible said, but Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews. Now, the preaching Jesus to the Jews, uh, which dwelt in Damascus, proving that this very Christ, that Jesus is the very Christ. It wasn't easy for him now, but he's going to preach. Right man by the job. And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. No, Paul was the hope of Judaism. 
Paul was persecuting people eh, for the name of God, for God. What he said he was doing. Being a, a, a Pharisee and an Israelite, and he believed that any other God besides the one God that he knows Jehovah, it would have been blasphemy and idolatry. So he was doing it, amen, uh, for God without knowledge. He had a zeal, but no knowledge. And that's where the world is today. Uh, the apostolic believers in the world today is not many compared to the world or what's heading in the wrong, the wrong direction. Eh? But we have to pray for them because some of them sincerely believe what they're doing, but they are sincerely wrong. They have a lot of zeal of God, but no knowledge of who he is. That's why we have to praise God. You know? And because of that, I spoke the other day, and I speak about um, about other people going into church for various reasons. Reason. And um, some are not going because they want salvation. Some see the church as a club. Some see the church as just somewhere to go on a Sunday morning. But that's not what church is all about. Church is a living organism of people who that is chosen by God into one body. Called out set of people as the church is. Sanctified, justified, reconciled. That's the church. So here we have Paul. Now, they were afraid of him, but he increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews. He was preaching Jesus to the Jews. They couldn't take it. And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. No, they, they killed Stephen. Now look what he did. They killed Stephen in chapter 7 of the Acts. And he was one of the instigators in killing, Steve, in killing Stephen. Now they turned around to kill him. Now look what this Bible said. And after that many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying away of, of, was known of Saul. And they watched the gates day and night to kill him. So here his life was in jeopardy. And I believe he must remember what he did to Stephen. Because the Lord said, I will show you all you need to be, you need to suffer for my name. But part of his journey was suffering. Was suffering. And you find that somewhere in 2 Corinthians about the suffering of Paul, all the suffering, all the things that happened to him. By the name of Jesus. So they lay wait for him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. So they had to let him down at night in a basket for his escape. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. So it's taking them a long while to accept this man because he, he, he did a great havoc to the church and the brethren had to be hiding and, and disappearing from Jerusalem because of him. He relentlessly pursued them. You notice that he was from the tribe of Benjamin, you know, and the Benjamin sign he was a wolf, you know, and a wolf would, would pursue and attack. But that wolf spirit was in him. That's why Jacob had the name Benjamin as the wolf. And Saul came on from Benjamin. So he had that hunting spirit about him. And he couldn't get rid of that until he got saved. Then he became a defender. Okay? He, became, he became a defender. But he was from the tribe that hunts. And that was, you know, because when Jacob uh, was uh, pronouncing the, the blessing on the sons, of them, he used an animal to, to uh, describe the nature of the ones that is going to, for the future and in the future tribes and what will come to them. So, Benjamin was one of, one of Jacob's sons, but he was Saul manifesting the wolf thing, going around capturing people, doing all that. How many wolves does that make? Then you also had the lion, which is Judah. Um, the, um, Dr. Lai with the seed of Isaac with, the, with his, the one that 
go down, plow. No, you had them all different names, animal names over there. And as Jacob gave it to them, but this wolf, Benjamin, that Saul came from, that's why his nature was like that, a hunter, hunting people down. But here within the Lord had to change him to give the people rest. One man to show how, how, how dangerous he was and the kind of thing that was going on with him. Once the Lord removed him out of the way, the rest came for all the churches. They could see the impact of, of, of what was happening to the church when, he's, when he starts his hunting and persecution in any house he went into. They caught the father, the mother, the children, and he could arrest them and bring them to Jerusalem and imprison them. He had that authority. Dear Jesus Christ, turn the situation around. Turn this hunter, amen. Turn this prosecutor into a defender of the faith. That's God for us. So the disciples let him down. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he wanted to be with the people, but they could not stay. They didn't trust him. They still wouldn't trust him. You know, they were afraid of him still because they couldn't believe that um, such a man as that could get salvation. Because he was wicked and he was doing what he think was right, but killing people. Yeah? and saying he was doing it in the name of God. But then the people and disciples in Jerusalem would have nothing to do with it. They were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But there was a man, the Lord always have a man to help. There was a man in Jerusalem church named Barnabas, son of consolation. He took him and brought him to the apostles. Here we have a God provide Barnabas to bring Saul to the apostles that was already existing and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him of how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out of Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians they went about to kill him. Every day we went and preached Jesus, they were about to slay him. Which, when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth with Arsa. So they sent him back to his country, where he came from, and that was Tarsus. Before he got back to Tarsus, when he left in Damascus, he spent three years in Arabia. When he was back there and he was also studying, and then he, he studied and then he realized about the church, one that the revelation God gave to him about the mystery of the church. And the mystery of the church is that Jews and Gentiles should become one. Paul got the mystery of the church and Paul came back with the church and really established the church by laying out on the foundation what this church is all about. That's why you find in the in the New Testament, Paul writes seven letters to seven churches. Although Jesus gave John seven letters to seven churches, given to John after Paul's time, Paul already wrote seven letters to three churches. Romans, Romans, Corinthians, and then he talks about Galatians, Ephesians, seven churches. You find that Paul wrote seven letters to and the first church that Paul wrote the seven, one of his letters to was to Ephesus. And you know when Jesus gave John the seven letters to the churches, uh, the first church the Lord gave uh, John uh, to write to, Jesus write to, and John wrote it to, is to Ephesus. And John was the bishop of Ephesus at that time. When Paul wrote to Ephesus, Paul and Timothy and all him up there, his son in the God. So here we have Paul, Went and Paul got the mystery of the church. The mystery of the church was that Jews and Gentiles should become one of the same body. And which Jesus didn't tell the apostles that. Because Jesus only told them that there are many things he's got to say to them, but they can't hear it now. Jesus didn't tell them that the church is going to be between, going to be a mix of between Jews and Gentiles. Because 
when the new covenant was made, the church, amen, manifested after Jesus' resurrection. And the church was there, amen, for both Jews and Gentiles coming. But Jesus didn't tell the Jews because they wouldn't go to the upper room. He just them to go up to the upper room and they should wait until they are endued with power from a life. But he told them. So when they get the Holy Ghost now, Jesus said, when the spirit of truth shall come into you, then you shall know how to deal with the situation. Because there was this thing between the Jews and the Gentiles. But the church was a vehicle. The church, the new covenant, was a vehicle that God has established to bring both Jews and Gentiles together. But the Jewish people rejected Jesus, they rejected the Messiah, the nation of Israel did that. And because of that, God turned to the Gentiles and the Lord getting the church out of the Gentiles. How did we come in? Because we apply faith, faith unto righteousness, and we um, obtain salvation. Now the problem with the Jews, they held on to the law. And they're using the law to attain unto righteousness. And he can call law means works, and righteousness you can't work for me. It's a gift by grace given to us, but we know coming by faith and receiving it. And what the Jews now using law did not attain to it. And so when Jesus came in, they reject him and said, Give us Barabbas. Away with this man. The brother said, Crucify him. We have no king but Caesar. Eh? That's what they said. And because of that, blindness in part happened to them. Broken off the green tree because of unbelief. Eh? So now we have the Gentile church. Yeah. So here we have Paul. Uh, here now, um, in, in Arabia for three years. And when he came out, he came out with abundance of revelation that the Jews and Gentiles should become one. The same body. But the thing about the new covenant and the church is that when the Gentile man gets into the church, he's no longer a Gentile. He lost his Gentileness, his culture is off. When the Jews get into the church, he's no longer a Jew because his Jewishness is gone. He's, and both are one new man in Christ Jesus. Right? If any man be in Christ, he's the new creation. All things are passed away and all things have become new. Here we have the new covenant and the church is manifested. Paul then had there the ministry. And he went down to Tarsus. And from Tarsus, then church in Antioch began to go. Antioch was a few hundred miles from, from Jerusalem. And the church now in Antioch, a lot of Gentile people began to get into the church in Antioch because in Jerusalem, had this problem with circumcision. The Jerusalem brethren, the Jews, they still held on to um, the thing about circumcision. That uh, to be saved, truly saved, you have to be circumcised. That's what the Lord has said to Moses. But Paul and Barnabas went down there and made big discussion in the Jerusalem church. And then uh, they came up with the understanding that they Gentiles do not need to be circumcised because the Jewish father did it and they couldn't keep, they couldn't serve God. So he said, put no further yoke upon them because they're receiving the Holy Ghost when they were baptized. So what he said they need to do, they should keep away from fornication and eating meat with blood in it. And that's what, from that, doing those things, then they should be all right. So they left the decree. I went to all the churches. So here we have um, Paul in Antioch, his first missionary journey. We're going to happen at Antioch. Amen. When Barnabas and him was up there, and Antioch was a, a Gentile oriented, oriented church and with Gentile believers. Uh, and it was really not Gentile because they are believers. But then they would sort of segregate themselves more where they feel more comfortable. <laughs> Uh, and in Antioch. So Paul started his first missionary journey in Acts chapter 13. He's going to start his missionary journey uh, because uh, uh, Peter continued until Acts chapter 12 and he 
uh, went to Rome and he was uh, crucified in Rome. He was all continued uh, from there until the end of chapter 28 of the Acts. Then Paul, the road that Paul started his first journey uh, in, in Antioch and then for Cyprus and Cyprus went um, all over Lystra, over from Philia and Cappadocia. Majority Galatia covered the whole of that area, and he covered that. And Paul did four missionary journeys, you know, in his time. And Paul, at the end of the day, um, end up in Rome. But to get to Rome, you know, one of the things about it, you have to read the book of Romans to see what Paul did. But you have to remember also, he need to go to Rome, and he was so anxious. And although he 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 was forbidden by a lot of the brethren, and there were prophecies that he. To Jerusalem because persecution awaited him. All these things, but he says he was not just uh, worried about being persecuted. He, he was ready to offer up himself. Uh, and so he went to Jerusalem and when happened, he ran into trouble. Then he had to flee to Caesarea. And from Caesarea, he was there with Bernice and all of them coming in and you have a gripper and all and Saul down there. And you know his name was also Paul. Paul is his Roman name, and Saul is his Hebrew name because his mother had connection in Rome. One of the reasons why you see Paul wanted to get to Rome because his mother come from down there. Also, he wanted to go down there to prosper him because he, in Romans 1 16, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it's the power of God unto salvation. Paul was called. As an apostle. And remember, he was called as a minister in the Gentile world. Then he was also a rabbi. Now he's an apostle of the Lord because he was sent, because he was not a disciple, he was an apostle. Um, because uh, a disciple is the one that follows. An apostle is one that is sent. Paul was sent by God as a minister to the Gentile world. Paul had to defend himself. And because when he was arrested and come under a lot of heavy persecution himself, but Paul didn't too mind it because he always reminded about what he did with Stephen. And so Paul was not afraid to get to anywhere. Um, Agrippa and all them kings, he went down um, for them and Paul preached to them in Acts 26. And you could read that for yourself and you could see how Paul got to Rome because he had appealed to Caesar and Agrippa would have let him go. Agrippa said, I can't because this man will appeal to Caesar, which is of the highest order. All then, um, as one of the things that we need to understand something about the Damascus world. Now, Paul went as a minister to the Gentile world to get the Gentile people a church, which is the body of Christ. And that's why the church is called one. Gentile church. And when they were rejected, the Jews were rejected, they rejected Jesus. He just turned to the Gentile. Paul was saying it's possible a Jewish man in the Gentile world yeah, to get the people saved. Because the body of Christ is the Gentile people coming in. Everywhere you see a Jew coming in. Everywhere. Because blindness in part has happened to them. The Lord is not true with them yet. Because after the church rapture, the tribulation starts. During the tribulation period of time, that's their conversion. See, we came through the water and the blood. Jesus took our, our um, um, tribulation on the cross. And so, but now we uh, came through the water and the blood and we accept Christ and we are saved. But the Jewish people re rejected him. So the church got to go. They will never get in the church again as they, it was intended for them to be first because salvation was to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. But it, it went the other way around. Now they are still outside there in darkness. But they are go, you know, because the rejection of Jesus Christ, it was out of the land of Israel for um, 1900 years and they came back 1948. So they are down there now. And so the people still, because of Adam, because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, was a covenant with these men that God is going to fulfill. That's why the Lord is going to bring them to the fire. 
with the tribulation. And that's why I remember this though, I always remember this, that it doesn't confuse it. You know, uh, that's what it's, this is the word saints in the scripture. It's three different types of saints, you see. In the Old Testament saints, Old Testament, that was what Jesus crucified. When he crucified and the graves of them were open, and the graves of them, the saints that slept, past and was open, and they came not out until after Jesus' resurrection. Then we have the church manifested at Pentecost, but we had the New Testament saints, and we are the first fruit of the Spirit. Is the first time the Spirit gets in us and abide and remain. In the Old Testament, the Spirit will overshadow us. Some people that God wants for a certain purpose, but the anointing would happen and then it's gone from them. But with the church now, the Spirit abides in us. Now, so when the church is raptured, there'll be no more church. Church finished, the body of Christ has gone up. You won't have another church. But the next thing on up is the tribulation. The only those to be saved have to go through the tribulation. Not the church, the church is gone. So they are coming through the fire. Ezekiel called it the melting pot. Even God went to pass them under the rod. Jacob trouble, Jeremiah 30, verse 6. You see them. Oh, the Lord is going to do that for them. And then Jesus will come at the end of the seven years and put and have the judgment of the nation. That's what will happen. And the German public nation, and put the good people in the lake of fire, and put the, the sheep people, which is the Jews, the people, uh, Abraham, the kingdom people, into the millennium kingdom. That is what's going to happen. Right? So here we have Paul, though. I must just say this. The Lord then used him on the Damascus road. You know, the Lord waited to make sure that it was Damascus. Now, because he's, he's, he is doing the work and the Holy Ghost working to him, getting the people in. The Holy Ghost working to Paul. In such a way, it never works to another man like it works to Paul. Paul is responsible for two thirds of the New Testament. Paul. And he came in last, said, Last of all, I was seen of him also. But he labored more than all of them. But remember that when Abraham coming from Syria, remember earlier when I said that. Damascus is the capital of Syria. I said that earlier on. When Abraham came from Mesopotamia, he came to Syria. Because Syria is north of Israel, on top of Israel is Syria. They had the fighting and everything in the last few years. But when he came there, he found a young man up there named Eliezer. Eliezer. And he found him at Damascus. And Abraham continued to turn. When he left Damascus, he took Eliezer with him. And the word, the name Eliezer means comforter. That's what he means. So when Abraham took him home to his house and had him in his house, and he was there as Abraham trusted men in the promised land. When, I, when Isaac needed a bride, Abraham sent Eliezer to pay the Aaron. You know, Isaac is a type of Christ, and Rebecca is a type of the church. Rebecca. So when Abraham, a type of God, you know, wanted a, a, a bride for his son Isaac, he sent Eliezer to pay the Naran to find the bride for Isaac, a type of Christ. And when he went, he found Rebecca, brought her back. Amen. And Isaac married to Rebecca. All right. So somebody said to me, well, Elder, but why did he bring uh, um, bundles and things around her and things around and, and old things and put it on her hand? I said, what that means? If she is the church, then you know the church has gifts in it. The church has nine power gifts and the five power ministry gifts. Those things that they put on represent the gifts. Because she's the bride. And, and, and remember that Isaac is type of Christ. So they represent the church, but it's the Holy Ghost that they look out from the church now. The Spirit of God is leading with the church. And when, when you see, because Jesus, remember, he had a people of his prophet, priest, king. 
So when he was here, he was uh, executing the office of the prophet. Now he's in heaven as our great high priest up in heaven. Eh? Can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But he will not always be the great high priest. The titles are his. So when the church is raptured, the marriage is going to take place in heaven. And Jesus Christ and the church are going to be merged in heaven. Judgment of the nation, judgment seat of Christ, and we have chapter five of the marriage. Then at the end of the tribulation, the end of the seven year period, we shall come back with Jesus Christ to the church. I'll be coming back to set up the millennium kingdom. That David's son, Second Samuel 7 says, God said, I will provide a son to sit upon the throne of David and made it an everlasting covenant. Here we have Jesus Christ, the son of David. And when Jesus, as, as in his ministry, as a prophet walking around Israel, around Eden, and they wanted help, notice they called him Jesus, the son of David, eh, have mercy upon us. So they knew that Jesus Christ was the son of David. As a matter of fact, Jesus got seven sonship. Seven. He's the son of God. He's the son of man. He's the son of David. He's the son of Abraham. He's the son of Mary. He's the son of Joseph. All them sonship is him. They were entitled to do with his titles. Because he is the son of God. Give him universe, he, he meaning all eternity and everything belongs to him. Son of man or universal, all mankind is belongs to him as the son of man. Luke, and he as the son of, of Abraham, all Palestine and Israel belongs to him. Belongs to Jesus. Eh? And he's the son of David, king over all the earth. So all the sonship belongs to him. You see. Now, and he's also the only begotten son. Only God could begot himself. Nobody could can be God, God inside. Only God can be God himself. No, we are the, the sons of God. So you also have the redemptive son. You have the creative son. And you have the only begotten son. The only begotten son is Jesus. Now Adam was the creative son. Adam was created. And the descendants of Adam we are the sons of Adam. But when we got saved now, we're no longer the sons of Adam. We are now the sons of God because we are the redemptive son. Are you glad you are redeemed? I am so glad that I am redeemed and I belong to the redemptive son. Looking for the blessed hope for Jesus to come. Here we have Paul, man of God now, protector of the faith, teacher of the doctrine. Paul writes the pastoral epistles, the general epistles, and Paul writes the pastoral. Pauline epistles. He labored more than anyone. So God bless you tonight. Keep reading the book of Acts, Paul, first, second, and third missionary journey. That second missionary journey, you need to stay with it uh, and to see where that, that's awesome stuff. Second missionary journey. Ask the Lord to open my eyes to that. I will see some things happening. We have got a lot to do in the book of Acts as we are led to stay in it. So keep reading it. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you tonight. God be with you. So good to see you all. Amen. So good to see you. Amen. And, and uh, Jada Jasmine and Mr. Morris. Yeah. The Montas and Sister Gloria. God bless you. The Faith. Brian God bless you. Galaxy 10. Jackie Wilson. For iPhone. Basic Grant. God bless you. Mr. Phipps. God bless Forbes. Um, um, brother and sister, what? God bless you. Amen. And then we have Brother Akeem, Akeem Blake from Jamaica. We have a Jeff Akeem, I can see you from Jamaica. Amen. He can build a problem. And we have Pastor Jacob, we see a Deacon and sister Walker. God bless you in the name of Jesus and so many more. Amen. Deacon Gilbert and Sister Vivian. Bless you all in Jesus' name. Go in peace and let me just close with that short prayer and let you go. God bless you in Jesus' name. Our Father, we thank you for tonight. 
Lord Jesus Christ, for being here with us. Thank you for your words, oh God, and that you have allowed us, Lord, to hear tonight. We thank you for everyone. The blessings of oh God and your mercy stay with the brethren, be with them, strengthen them, and keep them in every way, in every capacity of the word. And we do pray for them right now. And everyone, Lord God Almighty, we are about to separate from the other. Remember your children everywhere, wherever they are at this time. God Almighty, you know them by name. You know them by their address. You know that they are sealed. They are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. May the blessing of the Lord be with them continually. Thanks. Looking forward to the rapture of the church. Knowing, Lord, you went away not to stay. Coming back again. That's just now we do pray. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah.